Uh, well, it's really the the issue of the day. And keep in mind that most investors for the last generation, really, since the late 80s, have grown up in this period of disinflation, right? Inflation has just been falling all around the world. When I started in emerging markets uh, back then, I mean, we had some countries that had uh, inflation, you know, that were a thousand percent hyperinflation. So it's amazing that uh, countries have brought it down to under uh, double-digit inflation in a relatively short period of time over over history. Um, but now we're at this period where things are dramatically shifting. So uh, we have uh, central banks now that have to look at the U.S. as the kind of benchmark interest rate um, and have to react and have to react to inflation that in a lot of ways uh, some of these countries haven't seen in the better part of 20 or 30 years. And it's interesting to note that the countries that have tended to fare better over the uh, last year or so are those that did experience that inflation mm -hmm. you know, back in the 80s. Um, so I, I think about Latin America, um, and, and they, they have uh, really been the first ones to, to stay in, in some ways ahead of the Fed. They've been ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. But there are other parts of the world that uh, central bankers are a little bit behind yeah. the curve, is, is, has woken up to the fact that this is not transitory, that, that, that there is some potential here for more structural inflation. Um, and so I think that's one of the reasons that we got the 75 basis point rate hike. We're yes. probably going to get an, at least one more uh, in July. And it'll be very interesting to watch what the Fed does in September. And I can tell you that I'm not the only one watching this. I think there are a lot of central bankers in 50 emerging markets that are also closely watching the Fed and their decision-making process.